so now that we've understood price elasticity of demand, let's talk about the determinants. Okay? The determinants of elasticity. What will make demand for a good price elastic or price inelastic? But first, um, in the last video I talked about this equation. Okay? And I kind of skipped over that percentage change in quantity demand and percentage change in price. I skipped over a great way to remember this. So football fans, you can just think QPR and you'll always get to quantity over price. Okay, QPR Queen's Park Rangers will get you there. Quantity, price. But I, I found out another great way of remembering this a few weeks ago. Think about nightclubs. So when you go to a nightclub and you're a boy, you need the toilet, you just go by yourself to the toilet, alright? You yourself, you go, you quickly do your thing and you come back out again. Now if you're a girl, okay, girls tend to do things in groups. I don't want to stereotype, so this might not apply to you. But girls tend to do everything in groups, don't they? So even when it's going to the bathroom, they want to go in groups. Now, given that all the girls would go to the bathroom in groups, they tend to queue up to go to the bathroom. There tends to be a large queue at nightclub bathrooms. All right, so girls have to queue before they pee. <laughs> okay, so that's another great way of remembering it. Just think, girls queue before they pee. Queue before they pee. Queue first and then pee. And you'll always get it the right way around. So if you're struggling to remember it, you queue before you pee. We'll make sure you get it right way around. All right. But anyway, this video is all about the determinants of elasticity of demand. All right. And splat is a very easy way to remember these determinants. Okay. Just think splat, and you'll get to all the key determinants of elasticity of demand. So what do we mean by splat? Right. S is for substitutes. Okay. Specifically, the number of close substitutes. P is for percentage of income. L is for luxury or necessity. Okay. A is for the addictive nature. Okay. Um, I'll put addictive nature, are we good? Or I'll just put habit forming. Don't have to be addicted, you might just have a habit of purchasing that specific type of good. And T is just time period. Okay, so remember splat and it'll take you straight to these five key things. So, how do these things determine the elasticity? Well, let's have a look carefully. The number of substitutes, the number of close substitutes, right? Take washing powder as a good example. You go to a supermarket, you go to the washing powder aisle, and you can see a huge variety of washing powders. And they're all very, very close substitutes, all right? So the more substitutes there are, the more elastic demand will be, because the price of one goes up, you'll just buy Another different brand of washing powder. Okay, so the, the closer the substitutes, the more substitutes there are, and the closer the relationship between them, the more elastic demand will be. Okay, the more elastic demand will be for those types of goods. Okay, percentage of income. The greater the percentage of income a price change takes from you, the more elastic demand will be. So, let's have a look. Let's say the price of cars. Right, the price of a specific type of car maybe goes up by 10%. Well, that could be a £500 increase. Okay? That could maybe even be a £1,000 increase, in which case, that's a big chunk of your income. Okay? So the greater the chunk of your income it takes, okay? the greater percentage of income it takes when the price goes up, the more elastic your demand will be. You think, well, the price has gone up by 10%, by, um, 10% that's a £1,000 increase, I'm not, maybe not going to buy this car anymore. Okay, so it's going to affect your demand a lot. Demand will be very responsive to that change in price. Whereas the same 10% increase in the price of maybe matches, well, as a percentage of your income, that's only going to be what, maybe a 2 3% rise? It's a very, very small percentage of your income. So you think, well, I'm still going to buy matches. What is that to me? That's nothing. Okay, tiny percentage of your income is not going to make any difference okay, by me paying that extra three pence. So in that sense, a small percentage of your income it takes up, then demand for that good will be very price inelastic. Luxury necessity. Right? If a good is a luxury to you and it goes up in price, well, you can just demand less of it. You can think, well, I don't need that luxury anymore, you demand less of it. So demand will be very elastic. Whereas for a necessity, even if the price goes up, you think, well, I have to still buy it. I need it to survive, I need it to live properly. So your demand won't change very much. Demand will be very price inelastic. Okay? Addictive nature, if you have a habit to, to buy something, if you have an addiction to something, drugs, alcohol, cigarettes maybe, um, 
even if the price goes up, okay, your demand will not change very much. You might demand a bit less, but it won't change by a lot. Okay, so demand will be very price inelastic for addictive um, types of goods. And time period. In the short run, our demand tends to be quite price inelastic. So take fuel as a good example. In the short run, the price of fuel goes up by quite a long way maybe. You've got no choice but to absorb that price increase. You still need to get to work, you still need to drive your car. But in the long run, okay, maybe in a year's time, you might find other substitutes. You might find other alternatives as opposed to driving your car. Maybe you take the train now. Maybe you take the bus more. Or maybe you found other cars that are more fuel efficient or electricity powered cars. Okay, in any sense, your demand will become more elastic over time. You can respond better over time than in the short run. So in the short run, your demand tends to be quite price elastic. In the long run, more elastic. Okay? So these are all the factors that determine elasticity of demand for specific types of goods. Okay? So learn those and remember the splat. And the last thing in this topic is the link. Okay? The link between elasticity of demand and revenue. Now, the easy way to remember this is just think to yourself, okay, elastic only irritates skin, it's true. Okay, something that's, it, something that's elastic, something that's quite rubbery, will irritate your skin. Okay, so elastic only irritates skin. Why is that good? Because it helps you to learn this relationship. Elastic, opposite, inelastic, same. That's the link to elasticity of demand and to revenue. For firms, it's very important to know if it increases its price and the demand for its good is very much price elastic, well, how is that going to impact on revenue? Well, this little kind of memory device will tell you what the link is. So what, is, what does this mean? So if you know that a good is price elastic, okay, if you know that a good is price elastic and the price went up, there's going to be an opposite effect on revenue. Okay, so revenue will go down. Okay, you know a good is price elastic, and now let's say the price falls, you know there's going to be an opposite effect on revenue, revenue is going to go up. That's the beauty of this little memory device. You can work this out if you want to, you'll get to this conclusion at the end. Let's say you know that demand for a good is price inelastic, in which case there's going to be the same relationship. So let's say the price goes up, revenue is going to go up. If the price goes down, for an inelastic good, um, revenue is going to go down. That's the beauty of elastic only irritates skin. It gets you straight to that without even having to think about it. Okay, if you want to understand that, work it out. Use some examples. All right, but that is PE done for you. Okay, it's a big topic to understand, but when you know PE properly, the other three elasticities become an absolute piece of cake. Okay, so spend time to learn this, learn it properly, and you're in a great position to tackle what most students think difficult questions in the exam. Thank you very much. See you next time.